What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Hack the Box walkthrough. Today we're looking at Postman. It's a Linux box, it's had 11,000 system and user owns and the first blood was around three hours. So it's a fairly easy box, but it has some services that you might not have worked with before. So it's kind of a good one to have a look at. So let's get straight into this. Of course, I'm using Kali. And the first thing I did was did an MMAP scan of the top 5,000 ports. The reason I did 5,000 ports is because if you only do like the F flag or the top 1,000 ports, you're unlikely to find all of the ports that you want to be finding. Um, for example, in this scenario, you wouldn't get the Redis port for this box doing the top 1,000 ports. So it's, uh, you know, when you do enumeration, you kind of want to get something quickly and then you can do the bigger scans uh, while you have something to play with. So, for example, I might have done Nmap top ports, and then once I've got this result and something to look at, I would then do the Nmap scans for like the 65,000 plus ports to see if I'm missing anything in the future. So, looking at the ports, what have we got? We've got SSH, we've got HTTP, Redis, and some random port on 10,000. So, what I tend to do is think about what my best entry point is based on past experience. So SSH never really gets you anywhere to start with. Uh, HTTP is worth looking at. Redis never work with that, but maybe uh, 10,000. So what I like to do is I like to look at the web GUI. So the first thing I did was went to port 10,000 uh, in the web. It tells you to go to HTTPS. So I did. You can see that I think called webmin is running. So we know a service called webmin is on 10,000 and it's encrypted using HTTPS. So that's potentially something to look at. And on port 80, there's a development website under construction, which also could be vulnerable. You know, as developers make things, they're not, you know, as um, security focused as you might be in production. So there might be some issues here. But what I firstly looked at was webmin because I thought this would be um, probably the most problematic thing because it's... Uh, you know, you don't just have random services on these boxes. Um, so I wanted to see if there's any vulnerabilities in Webmin. So I went and had a look on Google. And yes, there are quite a few vulnerabilities ranging from like 2007 all the way to 2019. Um, obviously, I didn't know what version of Webmin this was. There's no version information here, nothing in the source code, anything like that. So what I did next was I actually looked at Metasploit for any quick wins that could be... Uh, around. There was a few modules, some from 2006, some from 2019-2012. Uh, again, I didn't know the version, so what I did was I googled Webmin 2012 to see what it looks like, and very clearly that's a 2012 login box if I've ever saw one. So that looks nothing like what we've got today, so we could probably determine that it's bigger than 2012, probably the 2019 webmin. So that rules out some Metasploit modules. I then looked at the 2019 modules. Um, two are unauthenticated, one is authenticated. The two unauthenticated ones didn't work. The authenticated one, obviously we don't have a user yet, so not useful now, but probably useful later. So just keep that in mind. Um, so this is kind of a dead end right now. So looking back at our ports, Let's think about Redis. So Redis is a database, it's a key pair database. That might be useful. This isn't a typical port you see on hosts, so it's there for a reason, most likely. Um, so what I did with this is firstly try to connect to it. There's a tool called Redis CLI that comes with the Redis library. Um, it's in the description, but you can download it from the official Redis website. You just have to compile that with make. Um, and that comes with the Redis CLI. So do the dash H flag with the IP address and that's how you log into the Redis database. To my surprise, there was no password. So that's good. Um, to look at the keys in the database, you type keys and the star and there was no keys in the database. So I thought you've got a database here, but there's nothing in it. I was hoping for a password or something that you know could help us out here, but there was nothing. So that made me think, what am I going to use this for? Um, thinking about the ports, where could this be used? Could this be used as a webmin kind of user password database? Could it be used for SSH? The, maybe the, the website and the construction on HTTP? So I googled for um, Redis 
and SSH and Redis and Webmin and basically come to the conclusion that it's going to be an SSH exploit because I found this Redis remote command execution and this details um, using Redis to write a key, a private, a public key to the authorized SSH key file um, in order to gain access through SSH. So that's what we're going to do. So to do this, by the way, that blog's in the description if you want to look at that. To do this, we first need to create ourselves an SSH key. So SSH key gen, the T flag, and then RSA. Go ahead and just generate that. Uh, call it what you want. I'm going to call it posty. Uh, and whatever passphrase you want, you don't have to have any. And that creates you a key pair, a public and a private key that we can use later. Right now, we're interested in the public key because that's what we need to put in the authorized keys file for Redis using the Redis database. So if you follow the blog, it tells you that you need to get Redis to save this private uh, public key to the authorized keys file um, and it does a bit of corruption so you actually need to pad that key with some new line um, well you'll see in a minute let's just go ahead and do that so if we go to uh, where are we going to let's just create a new tab uh, go to my desktop that's where I save the key so if we go ahead and nano into the into the public key dot pub that's what it looks like so we need to add some new lines on the end end and uh start of this so that'd be like this don't do it like this using nano this costs me a lot of time um for some reason it escapes the new lines when you try to add it to uh the readers database so we're gonna have to do this uh in a bash way uh, using this. So if you do uh, echo E with new lines and that puts it at the start and then echo E new lines and that puts it at the end and that puts the new key with these new lines into foo.txt um, and of course you want to change this to your own private key mine was posty.pub. Go ahead and enter that. So now if, if we take a look at, uh, we just cut that out, take, take a look at foo We've now got our private key with no new lines, probably because obviously if you cat it, you're not going to see the new lines. That's just me being dumb. Anyway, that's got new lines in there, I'm sure. So let's go to Redis. Now we want to put that key into Redis. And to do that, you can cat root desktop. It's not in desktop, is it? It's in this folder. So let's just go ahead and take that. And stick that here. So we're going to pipe this into Redis or into a key in Redis. So we're piping our foo.txt into the Redis CLI into the host and the X is going to allow you to create a key and we're calling it lol. No such file directory. Why are you doing this to me? Because it's in root desktop. There we go. Okay, so now if you log back into Redis, uh, if you do uh, keys all again, you'll now see that there's a lol. Um, and you can see there's an S key as well because someone else is doing this box with me. So I hope they don't mess this up for me. Uh, if you go ahead and get lol, you'll see, look, we've now got our, an SSH key here with the new lines. So this means our key is in Redis. Now we need to get Redis to actually save this to the correct uh, authorized keys location. Usually the SSH directory in um, a user's home folder would be in like slash home slash user. Uh, obviously this is Redis, so it's a, it's a service and it's not got a slash home like that. So that's important to remember. Uh, we need to configure uh, Redis to save to this directory. So first thing you wanna do is config set dir to the Redis directory like so. So that's setting the Redis directory to save to this directory. Now we need to set the file, which is authorized keys, and you do that using this command. This is all in the blog, obviously, as well. Uh, and then that's the final thing you need to do. Then you can just go ahead and save. And then that saves your public key here to the authorized keys file. Now, 
you should be able to SSH in with your private key now using uh, SSH. Okay, cool. So that's our private file. Uh, we're going to be using the Redis user because obviously that's where we save the SSH key to and then the uh, IP address. Okay, enter the passphrase for root. And we have access to the Redis user. Lovely. So at this point, the user also doing this machine hasn't killed us yet. So that's good. Um, if that happens, I'll have to just carry on from where I am now anyway. Carrying on. So at this point, I thought, right, lovely. Let's get the, uh, the user.txt. Oh, okay. There's nothing in this directory. Okay. Is there another user directory that I can get to? So I just CD'd out of here. Uh, had a look. Okay, home. Go to... Go to home. There's a user called Matt. Okay, let's CD into Matt. User.txt. Access denied. Damn, okay. What can we do here? Uh, so we obviously need to escalate ourselves to Matt uh, to get this user.txt. So obviously I looked at the obvious things. I looked at cron jobs. I looked at... Um, the shadow file, could I get his uh, hash and crack that? I looked at running processes, I looked at you know other files in the operating system, like lower level. Nothing really interesting there. Um, so what I did do was look at history. So this shows you the history of the Redis user. And as you can see here, Matt CD'd. So Matt's probably, well, that's actually probably me, never mind. Anyway, scrolling up. Okay, this is uh, a lot of stuff from <laughs> the other person using this box. Let's go right to the top. Uh, okay, you can see Matt's SU'd, so that's interesting. You can see he's cat and R ID RSA dot back. So at this point I figured, okay, so Matt's used the Redis user and there's an ID RSA dot back probably somewhere in the operating system that I can get to. If I get that, I could potentially SSH into the Mac user. So let's go ahead and take a look to see if we can find that um, id.back file. So to do that, I use the find command, which is this, find slash type f name idrsa.back. So it's looking for that file in the whole operating system, essentially. Run that. And that was very quick. Permission denied, permission denied. So in somewhere in here, hopefully you will find the ID dot back file. You know, it's probably quite hard to see. It's probably a better way to do this, but you know, it works. Uh, as you can see here, look, we've got opt ID, ID RSA dot back. So if we go into the opt folder, wonderful, there's an ID RSA dot back in there. So let's just go ahead and cat that out. We've now got a private key. So let's copy this. What I did at this point was copied that and tried to log in as Matt using the identity file, uh, which is this. Didn't work because this is password protected and thus you can't log in as Matt because you need the password. So what I did instead was crack the password with John. So to do that, you can use Python ssh to john.py. Firstly, you need to go ahead and put that private key we just got into a file. So call that mat not hash. Pop that into there. And then go sh to john mat not hash. And that gives you the output which is able to be used with john, which is lovely. Now, we want to use John. So let's just go ahead and create a new file in the John directory and just call that mat.hash. Put that sh to John output in there, save it, and now we can use that with John. So you can use John with uh, dot slash John, use the word list rocku.txt in Kali under user share word lists. And the file is not there. I've saved it in the same directory. So mat.hash, boom. There we go, nice and quick. It's found the password straight away, which is computer 2008. So what I did at this point was try to SSH using mat, the identity file, 
and Computer 2008. However, what I came across was he's not allowed to SSH in. So the next best thing to do in this case is go ahead, go to, where are we? Go ahead to the Redis user, wherever I've saved, wherever I am at that, which is here, to clear this off, and SU to Matt, like we saw in the history file. That's obviously gonna ask for the password. Case matters, guys. Paste that password in. We're now the Matt user, wonderful. Let's go back. Let's go to our home directory, uh, Matt, and we've got the user text, cat that out, user, wonderful. We've got our first hash of the user hash. So we've escalated our privilege to the Matt user, we've got the user hash, absolutely fantastic. Now we need to get to the root user. So at this point I thought, right, so there's a Metasploit module left that we can try that needed an authenticated user. So let's go ahead and try that now. And we're back, sorry about that. Metasploit decided it wanted to totally uninstall itself even though I had it running there, as you saw. But whatever, that's kind of the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So anyway, where were we? Uh, exploit, Linux, HP, Webmin package, RCE is the one you want to be using. Let's take a look at the options. Um, so now we've got a password and the username. Let's go ahead and set that. So set username to Matt, which is the user we cracked earlier. Uh, set the password to computer2008 because that's what we cracked it in using John. Um, what do you have? So we got our host, so we want to set set our host to 10 10 10 160. Uh, we want to set SSL because we know that's in, that is using SSL. And we want to set the payload options as well. So the L host is going to be our port, sorry, our port, our IP that we're using on Hack the Box. So if you do an IP config or an IF config, sorry, uh, you can look under ton because that's the VPN connection. Take that IP address and just pop that as your L host. So let's just have a look at the options one more time before you run it to make sure everything's in order. L host is sorted, that port is fine. Um, Computer 2008 is the password, got the R hosts, the correct port, SSL yes, username Matt correct. So if we run this, we should now gain a shell, which we do, which is lovely. So we've got a shell. Um, obviously the first thing we wanna know is what user the shell is running uh, in the context of. So you can do that with um, the who am I, uh, the shell is quite slow sometimes, so just give that some time before you think. There you go. So we've got the root user, perfect. Now we need to get the flag to put that into hack the box. Um, flags are typically under um, the home directory, so we could just do ls. Uh, this doesn't look like the home directory, this looks more like the webmin directory. So uh, to make this easy for ourselves, let's just go ahead and cat uh, the root directory for uh, root.txt, which is usually the text file for the root user. And there we go, we have the hash for the root user. That means we've totally owned the system, we've got full uh, system access. Wonderful. See you later, Postman, you have been owned. Um, so that's kind of it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, have a think about how Redis can affect an application, how it can be used to save files in different places depending on permissions. So, you know, configure that well. Um, think about what you're typing on the command line under your user context uh, for services and even your own user because if someone gets onto that they can see what you've done they can see anything that you've done insecurely for the most part um, you know it's really important so just have a think about these things thanks for watching guys give us a subscribe give us a like thank you